In part two of chapter 15, we're going to talk about bankruptcy. Now basically, we'll talk about the goals of bankruptcy law, the different bankruptcy courts generally, the uh, different types of relief in the different chapters, and a little bit about the special treatment of consumer debt. Uh, chapter 7, I don't mean chapter in the textbook, I mean chapter 7 under the U.S. Bankruptcy Code, is liquidation. Uh, this is sometimes referred to as ordinary or straight bankruptcy. Uh, the debtor turns over all their assets to the bankruptcy trustee, and the trustee's job is to sell non-exempt property and distribute the proceeds to the creditors. Uh, the remaining debts under Chapter 7 are discharged. That You'll see that that's going to be different under other chapters. Uh, chapter 7 is available for any person, individual, corporation, or partnership. And per persons in quotes is because it, corporation or partnership is treated uh, as a person for Chapter 7 liquidation purposes. Uh, notice the different types of organizations that cannot file uh, under Chapter 7. Uh, chapter 7, or straight bankruptcy, is uh, started by filing a voluntary or involuntary petition uh, in bankruptcy with the bankruptcy court. The, the bankruptcy court is the uh, U.S. District Court Bankruptcy Division. Uh, if the debtor files a petition, that's called voluntary, and if the appropriate number uh, and size creditor files a petition rather than the debtor, that's involuntary. Uh, prior to filing, the debtors uh, or debtor must receive credit counseling within 180 days of filing and submit a certificate of that uh, credit counseling. Uh, and it has to confirm the accuracy of the contents of the filing, and an attorney must file an affidavit informing the debtor uh, about other chapters of bankruptcy. There are some schedules under Chapter 7. Uh, the debtor needs to list both secured and unsecured creditors, their addresses, and the amount of debt they owe, and a statement of the financial affairs of the debtor. They also need to list all properties owned by the debtor, including their property claimed by the debtor to be exempt, and current income and expenses. Uh, that certificate that we mentioned of credit counseling. and. Proof of payments received from employers within 60 days prior to the filing of the petition. They also need to state the amount of monthly income, itemized to show how the amount is calculated, as well as a copy of the debtor's federal income tax return for the most recent year ending immediately before the filing of the petition. Uh, there's the substantial abuse and means test. The basic formula is to take the debtor's average monthly income and compare it to the median income in areas where he lives. If it's below the median income, there's no presumption of abuse. Uh, also, there's applying the means test to future disposable income. If the debtor's income is above the median income, then the further calculations are necessary. Uh, this would include a calculation of disposable income. Um, additional grounds for dismissal would include a conviction of a violent crime or drug trafficking or the debtor fails to pay a post-petition domestic support obligation. Uh, and then the order for relief, uh, if the filing is proper, uh, the filing itself is the order for relief. The order for relief is granted by the bankruptcy court. The involuntary bankruptcy is, again, by the creditor forcing the uh, debtor into bankruptcy. If 12 or more creditors uh, three or more which have unsecured claims totaling at least 14,425. Uh, they join in the petition. Uh, if it's less than three total creditors, one creditor has to have that amount of debt. Uh, the debtor can challenge this involuntary bankruptcy, but the court will enter an order for relief if the debtor is not paying debts as they come due, or the debtor was in receivership for the 128. 20 days before the filing of the petition. Uh, there are penalties for frivolous petitions against debtors. Uh, if a court dismisses an involuntary petition, a creditor may be required to pay fees and costs, in some cases even punitive damages. The vehicle for staying off the creditors is called an automatic stay. Uh, it's granted upon filing of the petition. 
and it protects the debtor from all creditors, a credit, which means basically a creditor can't commence their own um, action or um, continue legal action to collect individually. Uh, there are damages for knowing violations of an automatic say. There are some exceptions, and primarily around what kind of uh, debt um, is protected, a domestic support obligation uh, related to divorce, support, custody, maintenance, investigations by security regulatory agency, uh, secured parties, which we talked about earlier, uh, can petition a bankruptcy court for relief from the automatic stay. And we, with each of these chapters, we look at the uh, all of the debtor's assets. It's called an estate and includes all legal and equitable interest in property. Um, it includes um, property transferred in avoidable transaction and property which the debtor becomes entitled to within 120 or 180 days after filing. Proceeds and profits from property of the state after acquired property. Basically the idea is to uh, not just take a snapshot in time but to look at um, proceeds, profits, things that were acquired afterwards, um, sales that were made immediately before, those type of things. Um, things like inheritance, property settlements, life insurance proceeds. Uh, the bankruptcy trustee is appointed by the court uh, their duties include collecting assets and paying creditors in order of priority. And in terms of the means testing, they determine whether there's a substantial abuse. They file a statement within 10 days after the first meeting with the creditors. They have powers. Uh, the trustee has a right to strong-arm creditors to return the debtor's property. Uh, they have avoidance powers to set aside certain transfers. An example of somebody were fraudulently transferring property to try to avoid it becoming part of the bankruptcy estate. And um, basically the trustee stands in the shoes of the debtor and uh, can assert any lack of capacity or lack of assent. Um, debtor isn't permitted to to transfer property or make a payment that favors or gives preference to one creditor over another. Um, for a trustee to recover payment, the debtor must be insolvent and transfer property for pre-existing debt within the previous 90 days. Uh, you could also give uh, preferences to insiders. Uh, this avoidance power of the trustee extends to transfers made within a one year before filing. Transfers that don't constitute preferences, uh, uh, for example, payment for services within 15 days, a payment must be made in the ordinary course of business and, and um, generally applies to debts that are not pre-existing. And they have the power to avoid fraudulent transfers. There are some exemptions for things that go in the bankruptcy state. Here are some of them. Uh, equity in the debtor's residence, burial plot. Um, I refer to this as a homestead exemption, interest in a motor vehicle, um, personal goods. You don't have to memorize these dollar amounts. It just gives you an idea. Jewelry, uh, other property listed uh, in the statute, tools, um, a life insurance contract. You can just see some of the other exempted type property or rights and in terms of the homestead exemption the idea is to um, prote provide uh, protection for home equity and there's some requirements in terms of residence and amount the creditors do meet um, the trustee calls that meeting uh, and examines the debtor under oath um, Creditors are claiming a portion of the debtor's estate, and each creditor must file a proof of that claim. You know, basically, if they don't file proof of the claim, then there's, um, you know, there's a problem later when they attempt to go after the assets of the uh, debtor, and they they fail to um, respond. Um, debtor needs to file a statement of intention regarding the secured collateral. Uh, dist distribute, uh, you know, we talked about this uh, last time in terms of who the secured versus unsecured creditors are and the fact that uh, unsecured creditors are probably not going to receive much or anything 
uh, they get what's left over after secured creditors are paid off. And just this is a, an exhibit kind of showing how that uh, would work. And the, uh, the image really just describes the different types of property that we mentioned, non-exempt property, uh, properties that were transferred to avoid uh, the estate, after acquired property under the statute, proceeds and profits from any of those things. And then, um, you know, it goes first to secured creditors and then unsecured creditors. And then finally, if there's anything left over after all the debts are paid, uh, the debtor. So at the end of that, they're discharged. And under all the, the uh, chapters of bankruptcy, discharge means um, uh, an avoidance or setting aside of debts. And there are some exceptions this discharge, for example, back taxes, um, borrowing uh, to pay taxes, uh, you know, it's all defined by statute, fraud, support generally, retirement loans, and then um, chapter 11 is reorganization. This is usually for corporations and other legal entities. Um, the debtor and creditor formulate a plan in which the debtor pays a portion of his debt and is discharged. Um, the same debtors are eligible as under Chapter 7. There is Fast Track Chapter 11 as for small business debtors. Uh, they have to have a certain uh, dollar amount of their estate. There are um, workouts, which are private negotiation between creditor and debtors. Um, the uh, court can dismiss or suspend the proceedings if it's deemed prejudicial to creditors. Debtor in possession, um, where the debtor operates the business under court supervision. They have the same power as a trustee. Um, the court could also appoint a, a trustee or receiver with strong arm powers. And there's what's called a creditor's committee. And then it's kind of outlined some of the things that would be in a reorganization plan. Generally, it needs to be fair and equitable, uh, identify classes, um, and, you know, be uh, able to be carried out reasonably, adequate means for execution, uh, payment of tax claims for five years. So this reorganization plan is um, filed within 120 days after the date of the relief order. Uh, it's accepted, it's confirmed, the discharge is binding on confirmation. Uh, you know, generally just know the difference between the uh, different chapters of bankruptcy in terms of who they apply to generally. Like, for example, we're talking about Chapter 7 being liquidation, Chapter 11 being reorganization. Um, chapter 12 is sometimes referred to as, uh, for family farms, fishermen, uh, it defines what the, a family farmer is. Uh, this is not just small farm operations. And also an individual repayment plan under Chapter 13. This isn't for partnerships or corporations. And the statute gives specific uh, uh, income amounts. There is a good faith requirement. Uh, chapter 13, the filing of the plans within 120 days after the order for relief. And some of this is the same uh, across different chapters. Uh, case 15.3 gives you a good example of uh, Chapter 13 and uh, Discharge.